Hey there, this is Andrea Leonard, uh, president and founder of the Cancer Exercise Training Institute and 34-year cancer survivor. I am rocking the crazy hair today. Uh, just got done swimming and riding the bike. And I got this crazy get up here with the cheetah pants. I've got my uh, little compression thing for my Achilles tendonitis. But I uh, am going to give you a little video demonstration today of some lower extremity lymph drainage exercises. Lymphedema happens when the lymph nodes have been removed or irradiated. Uh, I'm talking about cancer and uh, cancer surgery and treatment. And it damages and restricts the pathways that the lymphatic fluid is used to moving through. So I'm speaking just very elementary here that if we block off a certain number of, let's call it lanes of traffic, we have the same amount of cars or lymphatic fluid that's passing through that limb, and sometimes there is a blockage. Um, typically, if only a single lymph node is removed, there's about an 8% chance that somebody will develop lymphedema, and that doubles if they also have undergone radiation. If they'd had multiple lymph nodes removed, then the risk starts at roughly 15%, and that also doubles with radiation. So there are other factors to keep in mind, and if somebody has a high percentage of body fat, that's something that we really need to work on uh, as far as getting people to increase their lean muscle mass and lose body fat, improving their overall body composition because the, lymph, um, the lymphatic fluid can actually accumulate and be blocked by the adipose tissue. Also, unfortunately, as we age, our risk goes up and for people who have poor nutrition. And the biggest factor is that lymphedema can happen any time after surgery or treatment. And I always feel like the bearer of bad news when I tell people this because the first thing they say is, oh, well, you know, I had, I had my surgery 10 years ago and I've never had it and I need to be the one to say, well, that doesn't really matter because it doesn't. Your risk doesn't increase or decrease based on time alone. So what I'm gonna show you right now are some very simple uh, lymphatic drainage exercises, and this is specifically for lower extremity. So anybody who has had radiation uh, or lymph nodes removed, let, let's just say from their sternum down, they are at risk for swelling in the belly, in the abdominal area, in the pelvic area, and in either leg, feet, or toes. So it's really important um, to, to not only have that understanding, but also to know what to do about it. How can you prevent it? Um, simple things like if uh, somebody is at risk for lower extremity lymphedema, they shouldn't shave with a regular razor because that, that nick uh, or cut, if they cut themselves, uh, of course could lead to an infection and the lymphatic system is designed to protect our bodies against infection and other harmful agents. So we've got all this lymphatic fluid going to that area and then quite possibly there may be a backup. Um, don't wear very tight fitting or restrictive clothing, you know, like bike pants where the elastic's really tight uh, or perhaps you know tight on the thigh. Don't get pedicures. Um, and, and this goes for, for men as well as women. Uh, it's fine to go get your feet massaged and soaked and, you know, if ladies want to get their nails polished, that's great. But if they nick you or cut you, that, again, can increase your risk of lymphedema. Um, I, I got a staph infection that way when I used to get my nails done. So you've got to be really careful. Um, there's more information on our website at thecancerspecialist.com on the patient's page uh, there's a, a FAQ and there's information about lymphedema so you can check that out but these lymph drainage exercises can be done anytime you can do them when you first wake up in the morning or right before you go to bed I encourage people to do it before and after they exercise uh, and then of course the the exercise program that you do should be based on what your level of fitness is what your energy level is how far out you are from surgery and treatment uh, there are so many different factors 
just remember to start and progress slowly. Don't do more than your body can handle and listen to that, that little voice inside you telling you if you're doing too much. But generally speaking, if you're doing the right exercises um, and you don't do too much too fast, you stand only to benefit from whatever it is you're doing. Get moving. That's the most important thing for both your mental and your physical health. So we begin with crunches and pelvic tilts, and I'll try and, and be as vocal as possible while I'm doing this. There's no magical number. So let's say we do 10 to 12. And the reason we're doing this is to essentially empty out any lymphatic fluid that may be pooling in the abdominal area. So then when we elevate the legs, and we work for that lymphatic drainage with the help of gravity, it has some place to go. And I'm really simplifying this. Um, you know, you don't have to be an expert in, in lymphedema and lymphatic drainage to have a basic understanding of how the lymphatic system works. So I'm going to begin with just some basic crunches and pelvic tilts, okay? Um, just looking up at the ceiling, keeping my neck in alignment, engaging my abdominal muscles. If somebody cannot do that because they have a bad neck, this ball is actually going to be a bit too big, but I'll, I'll use it anyway. Um, you can have them simply push their hands against this ball. And I'm doing the same exact thing as a crunch. Um, and then if, if your client's head is tilted back or if you happen to be the client and your head's tilted back, prop it up with a pillow so that you're not putting any extra pressure on the cervical spine. Next, we're going to do pelvic tilts, and that's very simply, if I had my hand here, you would see me pressing my back against my hand, just flattening it out to the floor, okay? Uh, I'm not going to do 10-12. I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version. Then I'm going to raise my foot, and I'm going to do circumduction in that hip joint, just very small circles, uh, locking in my hips. It's as if they're in a vice. And I'll do 10 or 12 in each direction. And then I'll, I'll do it on, on the other leg as, as well. And this should be very slow and methodical. Um, once again, I'm not going to do all 10 or 12 reps. Now here's where I'm going to use gravity to help me out. I'm going to start with bending and straightening at the knee joint. So we've got that pumping action. Pumping our circulatory system, our lymphatic system. Then I uh, straighten my legs out. If somebody needs to, they can support their legs here. And we're gonna do plantar and dorsiflexion, or simply pointing and flexing the feet. And then we finish off with foot circles, both clockwise and counterclockwise. And then that's it. Um, at this point, the rest of the time you spend exercises should be on doing exercises that are going to help you correct muscle imbalances, that are going to help you with any range of motion limitations you may have. And then, of course, don't forget to include your cardiovascular. Not only will you strengthen your heart and lungs following radiation and chemotherapy, which can potentially damage them, but also that will help you to lose that excess body fat that can interfere with the flow of lymphatic fluid. So once again, for more information, uh, visit our website at thecancerspecialist.com. Uh, Facebook page is CETI, and we have a great new blog, which is called Survivors, plural, Talk, and it is part of the CETI web page where uh, survivors are talking about their positive experiences with exercise, nutrition, meditation, and all types of alternative forms of therapy that are helping to improve our qualities of life as we go long into survivorship. Have a great evening.